Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today I've got lots of nice mail that I got and one of my viewers sent me something and wanted to know if I could help her with ideas on how to use it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. It's going to be loads of fun. I hope you'll stick around. First of all, I hope you remember that um, my viewers and uh, the owners of Rubber Stamp Tapestry and myself, we all got together and after the big hurricanes that hit Florida, Texas, and Puerto Rico, we, we put out an offer to help people replenish their craft supplies. So after they all got them, the ladies from Puerto Rico had all of their packages together so they sent me thank you notes from each of the ladies together and I thought that some of you who donated would would appreciate seeing the nice notes they sent us this one is from sorry it's stuck is from Myrna and she included some cute little cut uh, die cuts of angels and hearts and a nativity scene with a really nice note inside then this is really beautiful look at that I don't know if you can see the shaker in there but look how she did it so the shaker was um, part of the inside of the card really pretty that's from our friend Myrna nice job Myrna I love that then this one is really really pretty it's really um, fashionable and unfortunately her flowers got uh, smashed but it was really a beautiful card still is and this one is from she wrote me a note this one is from Lucy and again these were all my the ladies from Puerto Rico and then they sent me a really really lovely letter and <clears throat> there were a couple other ones this is from Janet and there were a couple other ladies that had um, were going to be sending notes later on and then my friend Rhonda sent me this lovely card that she made. She's just getting into uh, techniques and embossing and things like that. So she made me this card. Then she wrote me a lovely note. Her daughter Faith loves our channel and she really likes to uh, watch the channel and watch the videos and she likes to help her mom with creative ideas. Well one of Rhonda's friends had been making envelopes of a bunch of different sizes and she sent them to Rhonda <clears throat> I'm not sure if she sent all of hers or just some of them but I'm just going to show you a portion of what Rhonda sent me hopefully you can see the box those are all envelopes plus there's more and Rhonda said I'm not sure what to do with these but I was hoping you had an idea so I saved some out that I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with and then I got a great note on my blog from one of my viewers in I think she's from New Zealand I might be making that up but anyway uh, she said that they have hospice houses that have little gift shops and that these would be perfect for little gifts of jewelry things like that and that's a perfect idea I am going to take some of them to my local uh, hospital and to a local um, senior center that that has a little gift shop so I think that would be a really great idea for them to do for little gifts so let me show you what I first started doing. Oh, I, one more thing. Rhonda has been learning how to make embellishments, and Rhonda has seven kids. So if you can imagine when Rhonda has the time to do this, I'm impressed by that alone. But anyway, Rhonda's been making embellishments, and she wanted to send me some to see if I could use them and what I would do with them. So she had this little beautiful, this cute bow, she has the mason jar that says cherish the thought and has a cute little butterfly on it okay um she made these little three-dimensional flowers that are really cool that she crumbled the edges that was smart and then today i choose joy great idea and then cupcakes and then this one that says love and another one that says believe in yourself and another heart that says family and listen to your heart hello and okay then two more so Rhonda you wanted to know what you could do with those envelopes here's what I did this afternoon and it took me no time at all I took the envelopes you gave me and I made a 
an envelope journal. And each one of these, hold on, not the first one, but each one of these has a pocket. So you can stick, if you wanted to, you could stick a, another envelope in the pocket. And then the next page has a pocket, and the next page has a pocket, and the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. Here, oh, and then so I put on the back of it, I put one of Rhonda's embellishments, and then on the front, I put one of Rhonda's embellishments. And really, the hardest part of this project was making sure I didn't, um, I used old paper dist distress ink on it, and I cut the paper, I don't know if you can see that on the edge, with my old paper because I was really going around these edges too roughly. But anyway, that's what I made, so I thought I would show you how to make that. And then I have one other idea of something else I'm going to do with it. Valuable lesson that I learned while making that was that when you make one of those, even though it's a very simple process. You have to make sure your envelopes are exactly the same size. And I'll show you, I don't know, wait, I'll show it to you from this angle. You see the top edge? They're all askew, but the bottom edge, they're all the same. And the problem is, is that when you make handmade, homemade envelopes, they're not always the same set size. Can you see that? And these are the ones that I found that were closest together. Now you can get around that in a couple different ways when you're making these books. You could maybe cut the top off to make it the same height and then make it another another angle to your pocket or you could um, just eliminate that page altogether. That's the only other idea I came up with. Okay, so if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Let's whip one of these together pretty quickly. I chose some uh, envelopes that I thought, this is too small, that I thought would look nice together. And so color scheme wise, I'm in like the pinkish red, orangish pinkish red colors, I think is what I'd call them. So that's them. I'm going to go with that many. Here's how I did it. Now I've, I mean, I, I'm sure you've all seen people make um, envelope flip books, but I just want to make sure that you saw a simple way to do it, especially if you have a bunch of handmade envelopes. I didn't like these points when I was doing it, so I cut those out as I went. And here's what I did. Okay, i got to figure out which one is the biggest one, because the biggest one will really save me a lot of anxiety if I make it the outside. You're going to use a wet glue, and you're, it, it takes a decent amount of glue so what I do is I take my wet glues and I put them upside down in a container that will hold them so that they're always ready to put out glue if they're getting near the bottom. You follow that. The other thing I found about these envelopes, Rhonda, was that some of the edges were a little bit rough. So if you had a little rough edge like that, I just trimmed it off because I didn't want it to impede what we did. And same thing on this side. I don't know if you can see right here it's just a little bit rough. Now, that's you know, when you make handmade envelopes, trust me, I've made them. It's not always as easy as you'd think it would be. Whoever this person was that made these, she really did a great job, and she made a ton of them. I bet I have hundreds of envelopes, and I'm not sure how many Rhonda kept, but there's a lot. Okay, here's the easy, there's two ways to do this, hard way, easy way. Here's what I found. If you take your envelope and you open the bottom one. This is my outside of my envelope. And then you slide this into it. You're going to slide it up to, but not including, the score line. And if you can see the score line on this, it's right there. See it? You have to make sure that's even, okay? Okay, here's the, here's the way I did it before to make sure it was right. Okay, I put it in, I lined it up like that. Okay, you follow that? You got your two envelopes lined up side by side like that. And then what I did on the first one is I'm just going to make sure that the glue is gluing that edge in. So I put some glue. Oh, glue's coming out of there. How nice. That's why I did the glue prep, you know? And no glue's coming out of this one either. Okay, I just ran a little line of glue along the edge in there. Okay, 
You're going to play with this in a second. We just want to make sure it's going to be even. So you can play with it. That's why we're using wet glue, is we're going to be able to play with it. Darn, I didn't want to get that on there. Okay. And um, this in here becomes a pocket. That's why we're gluing it underneath there. Okay. Second verse, same as the first. I'm going to go with this polka dot when I like it. Hopefully it's the right size. Yes, it is. Okay. Whew. Lucky break. Okay, we're going to cut. Again, we're going to cut that little point off. You don't have to cut that point off if you don't want to, but it makes it easier to insert them into the envelope. And the reason you're doing it this way, where you're pushing them in, is because you want to make sure that everything in your book is finished. You know, it's finished looking. You don't see any white background. When I did it before, what I tried doing, I'll show you one of those so that you can just laugh. Um, what I tried doing was putting in the um, piece, the this piece, I tried putting that in while my envelope was glued. Yeah, we'll show you that. It's a hairy mess. See, this one's too small, too, so I need to get some that are a little bit bigger. That one's right. Cut off this piece. You don't have to make these humongous. It, you know, it's all about, you could put three or four of them together. It doesn't, you don't have to have 20 or 30 of them. So here's what I did before. This is, this is how dumb I was. I just slapped that glue on there like that. And then I went, oh yeah, sure. I can just slide this right inside there. Let me tell you how long it took me to figure out that was a poor idea. Oh, it was a while. I probably did five or six pages before I finally gave up. Everybody else I've seen on TV, or in, yeah, on TV, on TV, everybody else I've seen on YouTube do it. That's how they do it, though, is they put their glue in as they go. That didn't work for me. Just sharing that with you. Okay, I found one more that I think is going to match and will work. I think we're going to go with this one. Okay, one last time. I'll make sure you see it. Okay, the envelope, this envelope is open on the inside. This is the, hold on, it's glued shut. That's the inside of the envelope. And you're going to take this envelope and put it in face down till you get to the score line. Fold it over and make sure it lines up with the other ones. Now, if you have them that are a little bit crooked, you're not going to be able to completely line it up. Then you're going to go to the top and you're going to open up and you're just going to put a line of glue straight across and you can put a little bit more glue in there along the way because when we're done with this part what we're going to do, we're only going to make um, a very small score but I like this to look finished so what I'm going to do is this is maybe um, an eighth of an inch thick so I'm just going to put it so that this is where the end of my book is and then I'm going to go only one piece. I'm not going to push hard because this paper on these is thin. And then you're making just a little score there. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a clean top to your book. Because this is the back of your book that you're looking at right now. So we have our score mark. We're going to bend our paper up on the score. And then we're going to fold our paper over everything else. So it, um, this is the other thing I found when I did this. The uh, the lady that did these, or I'm not sure, maybe it's the way I'm doing this, there's just not enough, um, the angle just is, you know what, it's not, it's the height of some of these. Let me cut this last one. I'm going to show you how if you were going to, let's say we were going to make this top one into a pocket because that is the only way you can make that one a pocket is doing the top. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your scissors that have stuff stuck to them. You're going to take your scissors and I'm going to cut off a little bit more than I normally would but I want to make it even with the rest of my book. So now when we put our V on here we're going to just put the V the glue on the out, outer part of the V. You see where I'm putting the glue? And then you're going to pull it down 
and pull it over that as tightly as you can. Okay, now, so here's our little wee book before we've decorated it. You've got this page, which is a pocket, and this 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 is a pocket, right? This is the last one, and it's a pocket at the top. You see that? It's not a pocket on the end because you've glued it shut. Everybody with me? Okay. Now, sometimes when you when you do something like this, you want to reinforce it, and there are a lot of ways you can reinforce it. One of the best ways, and one of the ways I like to do it, is I like to take paper that matches or that kind of matches. You know, I'm really good at the old eyeballing it thing, so I like to just kind of figure out how long this is by sticking it in here. It's about four and a half inches tall. So, we're going to turn that around. No, I want to go this way. Four and a half inches on this end. Like that. And then I think I want it to be about two inches. Two inches ought to do it. So in the middle of my two inches, I'm going to make a mark on, one mark on to the left of one inch, one line, and one mark to the right of one inch. That way, we'll have a nice, um, even cover to our book. And I think I'm going to use some tear tape on this because we want to make sure, since it is a book, we want it to stay nice and sturdy. And I'm going to fold on my scores so that both of my scores are nice and bendy. So now we have a piece that looks like this. And we're going to do a little test run and see if it's too thick. And I'm just going to put some tear tape on it. And hopefully, it'll stay nice and neat. And I am going to show you a second thing I'm going to do with um, envelopes. And I'm going to do that in another video because I don't want this one to run so long that you go, Oh, geez, Sandy, you're driving me crazy with this stuff. It's got to stop. Now, a lot of people like to put washi tape in these kind of uh, books, but... I've never found washi tape to be extra durable or sticky for any length of time. I think washi tape is terrific for envelopes and it's terrific for cards because most people don't save those. Most people just, you know, you you look at the card, you go, oh, that's really pretty, and then you throw it away. So um, when it comes to things like this where you're going to be using it, hopefully, um, it's going to be something where you want to make sure that um, everything stays and so if you use washi tape I just want you to remember that there's a good chance that, that washi tape is not going to go the distance for you. So it's just a matter of deciding what you want to use in terms of decorations and when you decorate you just want to know that whatever you've used is something that's going to hold up in a in a let's say we'll call it a journal or a book you know, it's different than it, when you're using car, uh, when you're doing a card, as I said. Okay, easiest way to do this: set the book down on your work surface, and set the other paper down on your work surface, and then push it down as tightly as you can. Oh, and then I'm just going to really press down on both sides of it with my scissors, because you know I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. This is the front of our book, okay? And you can see that the front cover isn't even as long as all the pages. Now, if you wanted to, you could trim the other pages, or you could put a decoration on the edge of this. And so maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do something with a little bit of lace. When you are doing something like this, and you are trying to make sure that everything's even, it's almost better if you buy, I'm not going to say good, but um, store, store envelopes that have um, 
you know, like a little bit more durability because they're they're something that's easier, kind of easier for you to work with because they're going to be roughly the same size and you won't run into um, the discrepancies that you do as much. So what we're going to do now is we're going to very, very gently, we're going to get that one edge lined up like that. I'm going to put another piece of the um, ribbon on the back too, or the, the, oh, I guess it's not ribbon. What is it called? Oh, lace. Sandy. Making that up as you go. I found these really pretty 3D butterflies, and I really like this great big one. How to get it off? I don't know. It's not wanting to play with me. I think I'm going to put that one right there. And I think I'm going to put a little one. Yeah, I know it's a book and that when you do a book that it's supposed to be flat, but come on. This is frisky. Gotta go. Sorry, Canadians. <laughs> Sorry about that. I know I'm not supposed to say that. Okay, then I think this one at the bottom has got the right colors or close to the right colors. Or should I go with that darker one? I did the darker one. Okay, go with this one. It's got some lines in it that are frisky. Shh, not frisky. Okay. So there's the front of our little book. I'm going to have to come up with a way to um, reinforce this little piece here. And I was thinking the way I would do it I have this green paper. I thought I would do it the same way. I'm not going to make you watch that, but I'm doing it the same way as I did this. I'm just going to wrap it around and be done with it so that it's so that it's got a good solid um, back, what do you call that, binding? Yeah, binding. And then no one will ever know that the bottom is, the underneath of it is cracked. So I hope that you enjoyed all the presents that I got from my friend Rhonda and her daughter Faith. I really, really love them. And uh, Faith, I'll be sending you a presents back in the mail because I think you deserve them. And Rhonda, thank you so much. All my friends from Puerto Rico, thank you for your kind thank you notes and for the bracelet that I already put in my jewelry box. And everyone else, I really hope you like this, that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Tell your friends about me on social media. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.